So, uh, back again on the rat rod, old number two, and um, doing some more planning. I, I'm not ready to start work yet, but you can see here I've got a collection of parts, and I'm just kind of taking an inventory. I've been doing some more sketching, and uh, just kind of to, trying to let the, the build guide me where to go. So, uh, let's go over some of what we got here. We've seen so far, we've made the chassis rails. They're welded cut down so they're perfectly even from side to side. Um, that was some of the issue I was having with the other build. Um, the chassis it just kind of came out wonky but it's just a little bit, not enough to matter, not enough to affect the performance and it's a rat rod so I was just like whatever. Um, this one I want to be a little more precise since this is this is what you would do if you were building your own rat rod. You would make a frame similar to this, it would be box tubing most likely, that's what most folks are using. But you would want it square, strong, and parallel. Both sides need to be the same. So that's that's where we've started here. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I've drawn about ten different ideas for suspension setups from three links, four links, leaf springs, uh, inverted leaf springs, it, all kinds of stuff. And I keep coming back to my, I guess we'll call it now, my trademark cantilever long shock thing like I did on my first one um, so I still haven't worked out the front yet uh, and I'm missing some stuff for the back I've, if you remember on the first rat rod build I had to make the cantilever brackets front and rear out of uh, some Tamiya semi parts and I do not have any more of those so I've got to look at some alternate materials see if I can fab up something a little bit cooler this time the other ones were pretty cool they were aluminum they were pretty thick they were lightweight and sturdy and they worked out well. But, uh, yeah. Uh, if you notice, one big thing I haven't done, I have not attached the chassis rails together. I have no cross members in it right now. And that is because the rails are going to, going to taper. So, the rails are going to be wider at the back and narrow towards the front. And there's, there's several reasons for that. Um, reason number one, the body is narrower at the front. Um, they, I could put them parallel, but it's it, it's going to affect the front, and it's going to make it easier to mount the body on if they're, they're narrow or towards the front at the firewall. Um, the main reason is my front suspension. Let me get you a closer look there. So the chassis will sit inside of the leaf perch part of the drop axle. It's a Tamiya semi-axle. Uh, it's an aftermarket one, but that way... The way I mounted the other axle, these are going to be my front radius arms. They're, I think, 126 mil. These are the rear links for Jalan 2 D110. And they're going to be perfect for my front, uh, the length I need for my wheelbase. And these will thread into the holes already made and threaded into the axle. So they will act, they, they will hinge on the body, on the chassis, back towards the firewall with the standard rod end. And just like it did on my my 32 Roadster they will act like a torsion bar so eliminating the need for a pan hard or another full four link or three link so you just have those two links and it still allows flex side to side and it'll allow travel up and down but it won't it, it acts like a torsion bar if you're not familiar with torsion bar suspension it, it just has a a rod in a bind and it allows it acts like a spring and as an alternative to a spring a lot of uh, early 2000s 4x4 SUVs and stuff have a torsion bar front end you don't have a spring up there at all you just have the bar and a shock and uh, it's kind of a oddball thing it's not great for off-road performance but in this type of situation it's perfect because it'll give us more stability and allow us to use a little bit weaker shock and not have to have a dampener as much it'll, it'll it worked out well on the 32, so that's that's kind of the plan I'm going with here. So uh, let me move around here to the okay, side. So let me show you a little bit better here. These are going to be my radius links. If I can hang on to the dang thing, <laughs> so they're going to thread into the axle and they're going to hinge right here close to our joint. They're going to be really long and hang that front end out way out in front of the chassis where it needs to be. And then I'm going to do something with these long RC forward. I think these are 110 millimeter ultimate scale shocks. And they're going to be somewhere up here on top, front, hanging to the front axle, giving us 
cushion. Um, let's see what else I've got. My servo, I went ahead this time and did a lot of thinking about the servo before I've done anything else. And um, my plan is I'm going to make a cross member flat near the front of the frame and bolt it through because my frame width is exactly the width of the servo mount and it'll fit right down between the rails and my grill I don't have one yet but my plan for the grill it'll set right on the top of this and only the horn will stick out in the front and I can link directly to my front uh, axle and have a link off of it so that it can flex up and down and I won't have a whole lot of bump steer um, if you're familiar with bump steer on the crawlers it's you know your torque steer when you floor it and the truck turns one way or the other when it lifts the axle that this will help eliminate that having the servo close I know a lot of folks and a lot of traditional rat rods they you have a gear sticking out of the side on the driver's side and you pull a lever or pull a link all the way to the front and that's really cool and I really wanted to do that on both of these builds but the width of the axle is not enough as you can see turned here where the link would be would be right in the middle of the tire with the tires turned so there's just not enough room in there <clears throat> um, realistically the axle needs to be a little bit wider but it, not really I'm not gonna mess with it <clears throat> this is gonna be easier and it's gonna give me a lot better performance because I do intend this build to run a little faster than the last one did hopefully maybe brushless we'll, we'll have to see um, see how these tires and stuff perform once we get there it's still a long way so um got my my main link here for my steering got the servo um i've got these rods here placed throughout and these are going to be my basic cross members these are going to be the rigidity of the frame and i have them at varying links links it's hard to say <laughs> so the narrowest one will be up front and it's going to help the frame taper out towards the rear so they get larger to the back um, moving on to the back, we'll skip this here for a second. This is going to be the bottom of where the frame Z's up in the rear. Let me bring you around. Here's what I'm talking about with the frame Z. That's what they call that when you do a big step like that on a chassis. This is going to be down at the bottom, just to keep everything square. The one, there's going to be one up here at the top, but that is going to share a lot of things. That is going to be where my upper shock mount will go. And it's also going to be hopefully where my upper four link mount goes. And I believe the one at the bottom, I'm going to try to work it where my four link, my lower four link bars will mount either inside or out of the chassis there. And because uh, this one's a little bit shorter, I think there's room in there with some with some shims to put the uh, rod ends in the where they need to be. I'm going to have to put some shorter rods on there. But I haven't messed with what's on the axle just yet. But I, this is kind of the wheelbase I was shooting for. I've done a lot of pictures and a lot of things here messing with it just trying to get a an idea of the look I want and I, I think that's really where I, where I like it to be right there close to the back end um, you see I've got a, a scale punisher shaft here already that is not a rebuildable one just good less things you got a lot tight and uh, that should be enough length to reach from here to my transmission and this is the old RC four-wheel drive disruptor trans transmission. Um, I can't remember what gear ratio these are. I picked this up on eBay a long time ago for like 30 bucks. Those used to sell for like $80. So I've been sitting on it for a while. Uh, motor just bolts directly into here. The motor is going to be inside the cab. Since this is a closed cockpit, all electronics and everything is going to be hidden inside of the truck cab. And that will leave that big old open space out front for us for the scale motor that I've ordered, which I'm really hoping fits. <laughs> I've been measuring motors for three weeks now online, trying to convert centimeters to inches and just trying to find something, searching the world through the internet, trying to find the right kind of engine. And uh, I've, I've mentioned online and, and things I've, I've wanted to do a diesel. And uh, I have found a diesel. And no, it's not that, that cat engine that everybody has on their 114th scale semi trucks. It's something different, something hopefully you haven't seen before. And it is ultra realistic. It is die cast, 
and uh, that was on purpose as well I wanted a heavy metal motor because this is gonna be a very lightweight truck uh, we're gonna have our transmission which is the heaviest part which is still not very heavy with our motor and electronics are gonna be real low in the cab so our center of gravity is gonna stay low but I, I needed some weight out front so this front suspension can actually do something otherwise it, it would just be too stiff even with these light springs that are in these shocks so uh, big nice die cast scale diesel engine out front um, hopefully we'll be able to add some detail some uh, air pipes and stuff like that to the turbos and it's gonna be cool um, what else uh, this piece this is a front cross member off a of trail finder or a Jalan 2. I'm thinking about using this for my end of piece. It's got these holes drilled in it for my end of the frame back here. It kind of sticks out and I don't know, it might look cool. It's just, it's close to the right width. So I, I set it out. I'm just trying to keep true to the rat rod style here and just using whatever I have. Uh, I wiped out my supplies pretty, pretty thoroughly when I built the other rat rod because it was completely from junk. Uh, this one, we're going a little bit more into the fab and uh but i still i still want to keep true to the tradition that that to me is what's appealing about it is you're you're making something from nothing you're trying to do it all yourself without spending a whole bunch of money um right now i, I have spent quite a bit of money just on the body but uh and that front axle was fifty dollars by itself as well i had the rear axle already so that that doesn't count <laughs> But a lot, of, a lot of planning is going in this one. I learned so much from doing that first rat rod, that 32 Roadster. And that, I was just strictly winging it. I just would come in here, sit down, look at it, and be like, okay, let's do that. Come up with an idea, do it. I had things that didn't work. I had a lot of things that didn't work, but that's part of the fun, just the trial and error, learning as you go. I learned countless lessons on that, and I've already overcome many of them just even at this point in the build. Um... For the second one here, I mean my my steering, I think I've got figured out pretty well already. I've got both front and rear suspension base basically laid out. Um, everything is engineered already before I've had to drill any holes in the frame, so we'll minimize uh, labor here trying to drill into this steel chassis. <clears throat> Another tactical advantage with this not having the rails connected yet. Is I can go through and mark my all my holes for my links and my cross members, clamp the two pieces together, drill it one one shot so they're perfectly even from side to side. Um, doing chassis like this, if you're not if they're not precise, then your your rails will get off and one will be slightly further forward and then your suspension will be cockeyed and it's very very tedious with uh, link suspensions like this to get everything square and. I've, I've had some good ideas come through. Uh, somebody mentioned getting like a laser level and put it on the ceiling and lay out a laser grid so you can have everything square when you tack it together. But uh, I don't have a nice laser level like that at the moment. And uh, I do have a drill press now so my holes will be nice and clean. And I just need to keep these separate as long as I can in the build, the chassis rails. And I can clamp them together and drill perfect holes straight through both sides. I don't have to worry about wallowing out one side or the other. And uh, we're going to overcome a lot of issues that I've had in the past few builds that I've done. Just from uh, upgraded tools. So uh, I'm really excited about this. I, it is Thanksgiving day. It is about 2 in the morning. I have to get up in about 4 hours, maybe. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try to throw this video together and get something up. And get this out for the holiday while everybody's at home and bored after they eat and tired watch some YouTube and take a look at what I'm planning here um, I did want to show y'all one more thing I hadn't done on the other build I've been sketching I've been drawing a lot of ideas out I did this page this morning and last night or yesterday and night before last working nights life gets confusing I had a vision for my rear suspension, so I started laying out ideas for my, my shocks on the top, the upper mounts, sharing bolts with it. It's not perfect. I, I'm not a great artist by any means, but I, I, I like to engineer things. I like the chassis and suspension are my favorite things to build in the RC car. That's why I, I don't do a whole lot of driving in the RCs, because it's just so much fun to build them and then rebuild them 
and then change them and it, it's that's that's what it's all about for me is the RC engineering that's my new hashtag I've been putting on Instagram it's RC engineering because that's really what this is I, I'm coming up with my own ideas I'm trying to make things with what I've got with what's available to us on the market and trying to repurpose everything to build something new and different that there's not a whole bunch of out there yet um, this is just all the rear suspension ideas. I had a front suspension on there. And I've shown y'all this page before. I've added a little bit here and there. These were my my basic ideas here for this this build that's kind of got it going. Um, a few new ideas that I had. I, I considered making the entire chassis out of chain, like bicycle chain, and welding each piece together. That way you can bend it to any shape you want and you just gotta weld it all up. Uh, I've seen some, I found a real rat rod on on the internet that they had used some giant industrial like gear chain like that and made a chassis and it was pretty, pretty cool. It was a little bit out there for me though. That I, I'm not, I don't have the best welding setup and situation at the moment so I'm trying to keep my welding needs to a minimum with this because the, I only have an arc welder and I can't weld real precise little things here so the, the, mo the more I can bolt the better. Um, you see, this is where I did my basic chassis design. I played with some different angles. Um, ideally, I was hoping for a, li a little bit newer cab, like a, a mid to late 30s Ford style cab with a big round roof, but there's just nothing out there. I've searched high and low. Uh, different leaf spring front suspension, a three link front suspension, uh, just a rough idea for the rear, some basic layouts, body and, and tire and wheel fitment. Um, this was my original idea for my, my shock setup, and this is kind of what I've I've come back to here in the end. A um, couple other ideas, making using my Barbie 57 Chevy and cutting the fenders down and making bedsides for my... Because this is a truck body, but making some bedsides out of that. It, another thing I ran across in the real rat rod world, people taking big 50s cars fenders and making beds for their rat rod pickups and it's kind of neat I'm afraid those fenders are going to be way too big for this scale though so we may have to look for some alternative um, one of the other goals I wanted to achieve with this build was to show off my suspension work because at 32 everything is hidden there's only a couple little areas you can kind of see what's going on underneath and uh, I was really proud of that engineering so this this build is designed more to showcase the suspension and that's kind of why I'm not straying too far away from what I did on the 32. Uh, it's just going to become my, my trademark <laughs> technique, I guess. And uh, each one will keep crafting it more and more precise, more and more intricate. Trying to uh, develop some new pieces and things here along the way. But yeah, this sketching, I mean, like I said, I'm not a great artist. But it's just getting your ideas out before you start drilling holes. That's... That is a big key. That's something I didn't do on the other one. That's why I had to redo things multiple times. This will give me an idea of where things need to be, where I need to make, where I need to weld, where I need to drill, and what parts I might need, what might fit, lengths and things as such. So just a just a good idea. You know, it doesn't matter. You don't have to draw good. Just give it a shot. See what you can come up with. So, um, in the next video. Hopefully we can start putting this bad boy together, getting some suspension mounts and getting some things hanging out where they need to be. So uh, anyways, y'all guys have a happy holidays and I will see y'all in the next video.